the more you understand, the better chess you're going to play. Because in chess, as in life, knowledge really is power. There is no other secret to this. Let's uh, do another lesson, my friends, together. I'll try to explain every step of the way so that the process is nice and smooth. We will be discussing the pawn break uh, after development. And considering you moved all your pieces of the background, all the minor pieces, you've uh, castled the king, uh, how to do the pawn break. So we'll exemplify. <clears throat> In this position here, uh, white's turn to play. A beautiful fianchetto here. Uh, the black knight on a6 is a little bit uh, awkwardly placed and uh, overall white is doing better all that is required is a very nice wise pawn break how to do this now <clears throat> taking on c5 definitely does not improve uh, a great deal white because the awkward knight will be very happy to take back for instance so that's not something you really do want to play and uh, let's look differently let's look at this one differently here let's activate more particularly the knight on f4 now by just simply pushing d4 to d5 and the threat here is just simply taking more space or capturing here when black takes you're going to take back with the knight and having a massive fork on your opponent practically winning material and later on winning the game okay so you push the pawn here so that's something your opponent cannot just simply ignore Okay, so you don't you you don't take on c5 and helping them to activate their pieces. Now they take back, you take back with the knight and a lot of very positive ideas for white here. An incredibly active knight on d5, aiming at a bishop. You've got <clears throat> this guy here, uh, eager eager to take control over the dark square diagonal a1 to h8. So this it's absolutely awesome. And uh, you've got a chance to get a rook over to e and uh, perhaps playing a queen lift so that you're connecting your rooks. Remember, important to connect the rooks and keep them versatile on the back rank, ready to play and claiming columns, rook a to d1, for instance. And it's absolutely great. The position definitely favors white here. Again, awkwardly, uh, uh, badly positioned knight, a bad knight here on the rim. And uh, this is just great for white. Now mentioning you got a bishop that opposes the other bishop here, and you've threatened something like knight takes e7 check, and actually you're just uh, winning. If they take back, you're gonna capture with the queen. Okay, we're gonna move to the next tutorial, guys. Queen to b6 had been played by black. Your opponent here is. <clears throat> uh back in development we call it so they still need to figure out a way to get the knight on b8 to actually do something that knight on b8 is currently uh stifled here it can't develop naturally c6 being taken by the pawn d7 being taken by the bishop and uh they try to move the queen and moving pieces into the game but now you do have the initiative how do we improve our position here <clears throat> and now if you notice, the queen on b6 has been placed on the same diagonal with the bishop on e3, okay? Can we increase the pressure? Of course we can. We've got a beautiful b4 pawn break here because c5 pawn being challenged can't take. Bishop simply wins the queen. You definitely exert a lot of pressure. And it's more to this. Let's say they play rook f to c, okay? Because, you know, it is always wise placing the rook on a file that they are about to get open, right? So that you can claim them, having more power, supporting other pieces, etc. So rook f to c8 being played. But you guys notice that the queen here is on the b file where you may be able at some point to be placing a rook perhaps on b1. But before we getting there, given the fact that the pawn on c5 is spinned, why not challenge furthermore? With a4, you practically you just simply want oh uh, you want to take on b5, and if they capture, oops, rook is hanging. You're gonna be winning material, and black is just simply lost here. So this is the kind of a pawn break that we were uh, 
discussing here when the, we want to make it very clear for all of our friends notice the bishop on g7 how bad bishop that is hits its own pawn even if they go here no future and h6 is completely inoperable because you already got a bishop on e3 and will be just simply lost so positionally white is completely advantageous here with a incredibly uh, promising attacking ideas yeah of course a4 was uh, necessary to be captured and before you're rushing into oh well, let's me just uh, take the pawn on c5 why not improve the pieces position why not get the rook and actually because rook on f here my friends look at this one doesn't do pretty much nothing here so you've got to use your rooks get your rooks on open file or semi-open file exactly as we uh, said because those columns will be open uh, so rook a uh, f to b1 here <coughs> uh, again pawn can't take is pinned and you will definitely take with tempo on the next turn uh, queen goes uh, to c7 obviously knowing that something unpleasant for them is going to happen after b takes c5 you capture back bishop takes a4 bishop takes and rook takes the position is greatly advantageous here for uh white again bad bishop this knight can't go uh, anywhere meaningfully the other knight is very 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 much blocked now <clears throat> and uh, black needs to figure out ways to develop and the c5 notice the c5 pawn is weak because it's isolated isolated pawn on e6 isolated on c5 inactive bishop knight that can't go anywhere the knight on e7 for the time being so all these little details matter so 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 much for you and i'm sure you'll be finding ways to increase the attack on the uh, c5 uh, there are various things you should be considering let's go with the next tutorial <clears throat> this one here my friends in order to play here a pawn break which would be a beautiful beautiful idea with d4 you need to prepare before you do d4 because my friends if you remember the lesson with counting attackers and defenders um, that would be bad to play it now because black defends it with two Pawns. so they will be taking back you're actually losing material losing space and getting seriously in uh, trouble because the bishop would be attacked so before you decide upon a central pawn break prepare it with the beautiful c3 move here <clears throat> and then totally safely uh, safely would be for you to pushing d4 now queen goes to c7 they try to develop and now you absolutely totally safely uh, safely pushing d3 to d4 if black were to capture you capture back pawn takes bishop takes and then you have the c file from your rooks and everything is phenomenal it's greatly uh, activating your pieces again your opponent has a very very uh, unhappy bishop on c8 because they don't have any other place where to go they need to engineer something like b6 and even if they were to play a bishop to b7 you're still having initiative you're moving the rook we can debate rook c rook d capturing let me just continue with this one rook a d1 and if black were to play uh, bishop to b7 or bishop to a6 hoping for uh, control and developing you always have the for instance d takes on <clears throat> e5 here if knight captures you even winning a pawn with queen captures d6 okay so that's very good stuff to consider have a look at this tutorial here my chess friends i love to understand as much as possible and to convey to you guys my own ideas and practically they're like everyone's ideas okay so what can black play here to improve his position uh to activate your pieces and now you're going to notice there is the bishop on b7 here who would be incredibly happy to attack along this diagonal how do we open it you've got it with a pawn break because now we are discussing the pawn break idea okay so what could be more beautiful here than advancing c6 to c5 and you open up the bishop here the queen will have to stay after the knight's protection because if they don't and if they move the queen you're going to take and you're going to mess up the pawns defending the king with this guy resulting being in isolation here and 
even if they capture i mean it's absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous you could take the knight you have rook fd where the y queen is being positioned it is just amazing position and you have to understand this <clears throat> and then again hopefully you're going to be winning more games let's look at another exercise now with the same recurrent theme on break after developing of course guys i hope you haven't forgotten the golden rules middle pawns knight and bishop uh castles the king uh queen left connect your rocks and then pawn break okay what pawn break required here to improving the position you've got it correctly guys it's e4 you are either claiming space you're opening the uh bishop looking at the h7 and you're free to getting some rook on the, the e file and it's absolutely great and if they capture Ah, oh, well, it moved too quickly. Okay, let's uh, go to the next tutorial now here. What pawn break do you think is beneficial for black here? Is it C or is it E? Big difference in between them. Big difference, and I want you guys to understand this. If we go for the C5, by the way, you're given up on the control over the B5 square, which would be very nicely for your opponent uh, would be exploited, especially if you could do c5 now, you may get in trouble because uh, knight will be playing b5, attacking queen, attacking bishop, attacking your beautiful d6 active dark square bishop. So don't weaken your game here, okay? So rather than c5, which is not that awesome, why not going with e5? It's a completely different story here because <clears throat> if they capture, you take back with the knight. If knight takes, bishop takes, and all of a sudden, rook hits the queen. Bishop attacks the pin knight on c3, and they will be losing the knight, okay? Because it's no way for them to be playing this one successfully in case, again, if they take, you take back with the knight, and look at this rook, and the bishop would eventually arrive at e5. An awesome position for you previously, guys. Here. Let's have a let's have a quick think here. What do you reckon white should be playing to improving the pieces, to activating, to controlling more? Uh, let's look at the bishops. What do you think about the bishop on b2? That would be incredibly awesome to making that bishop cruising on the a1, h8 diagonal. But in order to do that, uh, you'd need to make sure that this guy is no longer blocking you. So go to open the C file. And not just you open up the bishop's diagonal, but you also open up the C file for the rook. So there's a lot of good stuff happening here. And again, that's exactly how you should be looking at this positions. The next tutorial, my friends here. <clears throat> There is one element here we need to understand in order to sanction it immediately and punish our opponent. The king is exactly in the middle, exactly in the center. Black has the king incredibly exposed. They need to spend, uh, what, two tempi? They need to play bishop e7 and they need to play castles afterwards. But you are not going to just sit and wait for them to do that. You're going to play something like e4. Why? Well, if they play bishop e7, you're going to push it one more time and you're going to be attacking the knight of tempo. Notice that the knight can't go on the light's quest because you're going to capture with the queen. And you've threatened all sorts of stuff here. And for instance, okay, let's just continue this position here. Bishop to e7, exactly as we discussed. e5 be taken and now you take back with the queen. Awesome position here for white. Uh, blocking, uh, not allowing black to castle because you're going to be winning a piece here queen takes e7 double attack on e7 only one defense the second currently provided by the black king so black is in trouble awesome positions here for 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 white if they keep uh, that king in the center also there is uh, a rook a to d coming where the black queen is so that's sort of like the dream position and there is so much good stuff i don't even know what to tell you i mean what's more powerful bishop a3 rook ad there is there is enormous attacking potential here for white my friends so i hope that is a bit more clearer and brings a bit more light in your own uh, understandings and uh, see you guys on the next video or see you maybe on my uh, next live stream thank you very much guys and i'll see you next time